This is about what kind of Frankenstein that we have created. We've created a monster, and that monster is the MS-13. As much as the monster has to take responsibility for what it has done, we need to take responsibility for what we have created. My name is Stephen Dudley, and I wrote MS-13, The Making of America's Most Notorious Gang. MS-13 is a gang that was born in Los Angeles, mostly of immigrant families that came up from El Salvador during a terrible civil war that was happening in that country. There's violent confrontation between the many peoples who now live here. They formed in the midst of a city that was obviously going through a lot of changes in terms of immigration and they felt like they needed to sort of create a cohesive group that could confront some of the other immigrant groups that were around them, mostly Mexican-Americans that were also in the area. It's a mosaic of nations, cultures, and gangs. They were initially very enthralled by heavy metal music. If you think of music like ACDC or Iron Maiden, very heavy guitar, heavy drums, and they had long hair, and they wore ripped jeans, and that's what brought them together. Los Angeles means the city of the angels, but down below the glittering lights of Hollywood and Bel Air, the streets are far from angelic. It is a time in which Los Angeles is experiencing unprecedented levels of violence and gang activity. Los Angeles has the worst gang problem in the states. Hundreds of gangs are operational in that city landscape. The gang starts to spread within Los Angeles and they start to spread out to different neighborhoods. And eventually over time, they begin to set up in other cities around the United States. As they spread, they get into more and more trouble. As they get into more and more trouble, they get jailed more often and even deported more often. So what happens is, um, you know, portions of the gang are in jail and other portions of the gang begin to be deported mostly to the areas from which they've come, which is Central America, places like El Salvador. One story that really caught our attention today came from Immigration and Customs Enforcement. In the past year, that agency says it has deported nearly 400,000 people. That's a record. The same brand name, the MS-13, that they had used and they had built up in Los Angeles is established in El Salvador. Locking people up hasn't solved the crisis. Deported gang members have used prison to regroup and recruit. The name Mara Salvatrucha is actually sort of two parts. Obviously, you have Mara. Mara is a reference to a kind of small, rambunctious group of kids. And it eventually becomes a euphemism for gangs. And then Salvatrucha is a neologism, which is a kind of combination of terms. Salva is a reference to the Salvador, El Salvador, the country. And trucha is thought of as meaning savvy. And so you put those together and you have a sort of rambunctious group of kids that is from El Salvador that is very savvy. Salvatruchas, as it happens, is also the name of a collective of Salvadorans who in the mid 19th century also were fighting off an invasion of sorts from a profiteer, a person from the United States who had created a private army and who was overrunning parts of Central America. And the Salvatruchas were one of the groups that fought him off, and that man's name was William Walker. And so this is also part of the origin story. 
The 13 on the MS-13's name is a little bit of a mystery. Some members say it was part of the name forever, 13 being a number of what they said was evil. They really enjoyed this idea of them being close to the devil. They loved this idea of heavy metal and satanic worship and things. Some took it more literally than others, but it was evil, right? But the 13 is kind of formally attached to the name for all of them when they come under the umbrella of another criminal organization that is called the Mexican Mafia. The Mexican Mafia is an organization that is run from United States jails, in particular California state prison system. The 13 is because M is the 13th letter in the alphabet. At a certain point, the MS-13 becomes under that umbrella. They accept that the Mexican Mafia is an overlord of sorts. So in homage to the Mexican Mafia, they tack on the 13. There are a lot of common misunderstandings or myths about street gangs. Probably one of the most prominent is that they are a mafia or a drug trafficking organization. They are very far from a mafia or a drug trafficking organization. There are times in which they do sell drugs at a very small level. There are some members who have tried to become big drug traffickers, but they have all failed. This organization, more than being a mafia, is kind of a rudimentary social club, a very loosely knit network of people who have a shared identity and have shared experiences. Uh, collective violence, collective violence against others and collective violence against themselves. This is what binds these groups together. They are looking for a kind of surrogate family. And that's a great misunderstanding as it relates to gangs. We think of them as criminal organizations first, but they are really social organizations first and criminal organizations second. The MS-13 is organized in what are called cliques. These are small cells. They vary in size. In the United States, they tend to be between 10 and 20 members. But in places like El Salvador, they can be anywhere from 50 to 70 members. Your peak gang activity is, you know, between the ages of 18 and 25. That's when you're most active in any gang, regardless of the gang, regardless of the race. There are no women in the MS-13 gangs right now. The gang is dangerous. The gang is involved in a lot of criminal activity. Most of the gang's revenue, for instance, comes from extortion. And the people that they're extorting more often than not are their neighbors, are the local shopkeepers, the local mechanics, you know, the most vulnerable populations. There's a sense that, you know, there's a huge disproportionate fear that the MS-13 is invading or what President Trump has said, occupying towns. We're going to restore safety to our streets and peace to our communities. And we're going to destroy the vile criminal cartel MS-13. But really, they gangs. are targeting people who are in their immediate vicinity. The MS-13 has sought to set itself apart from others in various ways. Probably the most notable of which is their wanton use of machetes. They started using machetes because they come from a place in El Salvador where machetes are useful, you know, one of the most useful and used tools. But they find that they are also useful in a lot of respects in the gang world. Uh, they're readily available, they're cheap, and they shear an image of terror into their rivals. The thought of being cut in gruesome ways by machetes is a psychological weapon and they use it. 
In fact, they kill a lot less than many other gangs in the United States. But because their killings are so gruesome, we remember them more. I was reading one of these animals was caught and explaining they like to knife them and cut them and let them die slowly because that way it's more painful and they enjoy watching that much more. These are animals. The Mara Salva Trucha now is a very useful political tool for people who want to vilify immigrant populations, people who come from other countries. They use the gang and conflate the gang with entire populations, or in some cases, entire immigrant groups. The United States has a long history with Latin America and countries like El Salvador. That relationship goes back decades and decades, and not all of it is good. Part of a batch of 50 new military trucks moving up from a port at the eastern end of El Salvador, the first shipment of President Reagan's latest military rescue effort here. The United States uh, uses its power in that relationship. It is obviously the bigger country, the more powerful country, to its favor. And they have supported governments that have not treated their citizens well, uh, in particular during the Civil War period of the 1980s in El Salvador, during which the United States supported regimes that were committing mass human rights violations, which means they were jailing people without due cause. They were torturing people and they were executing people. And they were executing their own citizens when they were protesting. All of this lays the groundwork for the mass exodus to the United States itself and for the later creation of the gang, both in Los Angeles and other parts of the United States, and then back in places like El Salvador. I think when people think about the MS-13, they do need to consider that it is a very serious danger and a serious risk. Mostly though, it is a very serious danger and serious risk to the Latino population.